Lulay, and I hope you are having a marvelous day. Today, as we continue to explore African American culture, I want to make a cry of contrition. If only we followed Booker T. Washington's advice. Who is Booker T. Washington, and why should we have followed his advice? Booker T. Washington was the founder and chief builder of Tuskegee Institute, now Tuskegee University. In 1881, when he was commissioned to come to Tuskegee, Alabama to lead a college for African American students, he thought he was coming into a ready-made situation. When he got to Tuskegee, what he found was three shanties with leaking roofs. They were the classrooms. He realized that he was going to have to build the college. So he and his students, along with members of the Macon County community set about building the buildings, putting the infrastructure of the new college in place. They did an impressive job. Some of the early buildings at Tuskegee are on the screen now. Not only did Booker T. Washington put an impressive infrastructure in place, but he also created two practical curricula. He created a curricula of trade and one of academics. Those curricula were based on industry, education, and entrepreneurship. Students were taught carpentry, agriculture, mechanics, homemaking skills, and all skills needed to build homes and communities. The goal was to teach these students how to build self-sustaining communities. Teaching was at the core of the program. Each one, teach one, go back into your communities, whatever you've learned how to do, teach that to your people, teach that to your community. These students, parents and grandparents had been slaves. It was against the law for slaves to learn how to read and write. So many of them did not have those skills. So these students were taught to go back and teach. They were also taught entrepreneurship. Build your own business to create your own employment. Booker T. Washington wanted those students to understand you need to build your own employment and not go back to your slave master and expect him to take care of you. Booker T. Washington's work ethic and his approach to education were wildly successful. So successful that he gained attention from those in the highest echelons of American society including industrialists, philanthropists, and politicians. Fourteen years after he arrived in Tuskegee, Booker T. Washington was the most influential African American in the United States. Why should we have followed Booker T. Washington's advice? In 1895, Booker T. Washington said that economic independence was the way for African Americans to gain political and social equity with white Americans. Now here we are 125 years later, we do not have a strong economic base. We don't really own anything in America even though we are a $1.2 trillion economy. We generate more money than the average country. There are only about nine countries in the world that have a larger gross national product than African Americans. But because we have not built that economic independence, we don't have anything, we don't own anything. And so we suffer from that as a group. Although many African Americans are extremely successful, as a group, we are still struggling. The economic gap between black Americans and white Americans is astronomical. If we had taken Booker T. Washington's advice, we would have generations of successful business practices. Booker T. Washington believed that self-reliance, thrift, saving money, penny pension, learning a skill, trade, or having a profession and owning property were ways of African Americans gaining respectability and becoming full citizens. This is not to say 
that African Americans shouldn't take advantage of the job opportunities and employment opportunities that we have today and that everybody should practice entrepreneurship and build businesses from the ground up. That is not what I'm saying because we certainly have a right to everything that this country has to offer given the fact that it was built on the backs of our ancestors. What I'm saying is that in the early 20th century, when these job opportunities not only were not available to us, they were purposely kept away from us. We were purposely shut out of these opportunities. So if we had built our businesses in the way that Booker T. Washington was speaking in those days, then now we could have the opportunities that are now available to us, but we would also have built that strong economic base that he advised us to do. The black middle class was actually started with the Booker T. Washington concept. There are businesses in every southern town in particular that you can go to where they can tell you and they will tell you that they were self-sustaining communities up until about the 60s and the 70s when we were lulled into this whole idea of integration. Integration has become a moving target that the more we rush towards it, the farther away it gets. It's almost as if we're expecting our former slave masters or the descendants of our uh, former slave masters to make us equal with them and they are not going to do that. And this is what Booker T. Washington was trying to tell African Americans back in the early 20th century. Your slave master is not going to make you equal to him. And why would he? That really, really does not make any sense. And I'm going to elevate you. You have to make yourself valuable to the community. You have to earn your equality by your, your character, your work ethic, and your accomplishments. We have to earn respect. It's not given. And Booker T. Washington also said that the slave master's desire to segregate is greater than any accomplishment that he would wish for this country. And that is still true today. We see things happening and we think, well, why did they do that? But somewhere undergirding that is some desire to pull away and to build something separate than from, from African Americans. And we see that. So we're constantly striving for a dream that we know really is not ever going to come true. If there is one takeaway from this discussion, I would like for it to be this. Our former slave masters are not going to make us equal to them, not through laws, not through going to church with them. They are not going to do it. The way that you make yourself equal to another individual is by doing equal work having equal thoughts. We have to make ourselves essential to the economy and the communities that we live in. Booker T. Washington said the individual that can do something that the world wants done will in the end make his way regardless to race. You don't get to be equal by laws. You get equal through your work ethic, your character, and your achievements. That is the way to make yourself equal and then you have to pull the other race, the brothers in your race up because if you're the one person that's up there with them and the rest of your people are down groveling, well then you're still not going to be respected. The way to be respected is to make yourself and your people, we have to pull ourselves up together and then we are a strong force to be reckoned with. That is how everybody else is doing it and there's no point in us trying to do it any differently or to think that it works any differently for us. If only we had followed Booker T. Washington's advice. 125 years after Booker T. Washington made his grand entrance on the stage, we have made tremendous progress as a race in the United States. We have suffered discrimination and oppression on every end, and yet we continue to rise. 
I still do not believe that we have made the success that we would have made if we had followed his model because America was never going to do any better towards us than it has done. I think it would be helpful if we would go back and read Booker T. Washington's autobiography, Up From Slavery, some very interesting things to learn about his life and his principles. If only we had followed his advice. I don't think it's too late. I think we can brush that book off and look at some of his thoughts and his writings. And I still think that we could benefit from his advice. Have a wonderful day.